Hello and welcome to our Equine Monthly Musings and this month we're going to talk about laminitis. I'm Lucy Meehan, I'm your radiologist on call for this particular topic um, so if you have any questions please feel free to post those on the social media platforms. Laminitis is a particularly common issue at this time of year and this year we are forecasting that there may be more laminitic horses given that horses have been worked less in the early part of the spring. Treating laminitic horses and monitoring the progress of the disease can be challenging and, and radiographs are commonly used to provide a useful insight into disease progression. But how do we get the most out of our radiographs and, and what should we be looking for? So I'm just going to quickly talk you through the two radiographs on the screen. We have a lateromedial um, of the left forefoot of a pony and the radiographs were taken three weeks apart. Um, the pony had been suffering with laminitic signs for about two weeks for the image on the left and three weeks later, so five weeks for the image on the right. So there's three main things that I look for when I'm looking at a, an x-ray of a horse that I suspect is, going, uh, is laminitic. First of all, I look at the um, divergence of the dorsal border of the distal phalanx away from the dorsal hoof wall. So if we draw a line down the dorsal border of the distal phalanx here, sorry it's not quite parallel, um, just here, and then we draw a line down the dorsal hoof wall and it's quite important to use this proximal part of the dorsal hoof wall because if you've got some flaring of the um, toe you can sometimes make the angle look more than it actually is but I think we can agree there is some moderate divergence, moderate rotation of the distal phalanx. When I measured this it was about 20 degrees so it's, it's relatively severe. Um, if you suspect there's some rotation but actually the farrier's been involved and the hoof wall's been trimmed, it's always useful to look at the angle of the, dis the solar mar margin of the distal phalanx as well because that can sometimes give you a clue to the beam phalangeal rotation. So the angle of the distal phalanx to the solar surface should be about between 5 and 10 degrees. This measured uh, about 15 degrees in this horse, so, so that points to a shift as well. So that's the first thing, that's the most obvious thing we look at, the rotation. The second thing that we look at, which it can be quite subtle and it can occur either on its own or in association with rotation, is sinking of the distal phalanx. So we, what we do here is we measure the vertical distance between the extensor post of the distal phalanx, so I'm just putting out a horizontal line there, and the position of the coronary band, so I'm just putting a horizontal line at the coronary band as well. So this metal marker is positioned to denote the coronary band. So all we need to do is measure the vertical distance between these, which is just about a centimetre in this horse. Now, there is a normal, which is less than 16 millimetres, but certainly this varies from horse to horse. So what I normally do is measure the contralateral limb if the horse is only unilaterally affected with laminitis, or measure the hind limbs, which um, gives you a, a, an idea of what could be normal for that horse. And the other thing that's important to do is monitor that. Um, so if you take sequential radiographs, take the same measurements every time. To me, a centimetre is a little bit more than I would expect for this horse. And certainly there's other things going on that would make me think there is some sinking. And also I had the, this horse was unilaterally laminitic. I had the contralateral limb and the, the D-distance or founder distance and the contralateral limb was five millimetres. So that tells me that there's been some sinking here just get rid of those measurements. The third thing I look at is the depth of the sole. So we can see we've got a little bit of lipping of the distal phalanx here, so that suggests that this is a more chronic um, problem than, than maybe we'd thought. Um, and we've got about seven millimetres of solar depth, sorry, seven millimetres of solar depth there, which is less than I would normally expect. I'd normally expect a centimetre. So the three things going on here, we've got rotation of the distal phalanx, we've got sinking of the distal phalanx, and we've got a reduced solar depth. And those are the real key things to look for with our laminitic x-rays. There's a few other things going on. So we've got some gas shadows or um, seroma formation within the distal phalanx, uh, within the hoof capsule here. We've got a loss of the normal distinction between the keratinized tissue and the lamina tissue. Um, but really, those things are added extras and they're not the primary things we're looking at when we're looking for laminitis. If we look at our um, picture three weeks later, and it's really important to compare these images when you are taking laminitic x-rays and you've taken them previously, just compare what you've got um, with what you had previously. So we can see the farrier's been involved, this toe's been chopped a little bit. 
I think our angle of rotation is pretty similar. I think that measured up at about 10 degrees, uh, sorry, 20 degrees again. And then our angle of elevation of the distal phalanx is also fairly similar to how it was. Um, if we take this, there's no coronary band marker, but the coronary band to me would appear to be here. If we take this as a um, level of the coronary band and we measure the two vertical lines, we've got 12 millimetres there. So that is increased compared to previously. And the most telling thing that, that's telling that there's been a slight deterioration in this horse is actually this contour of the solar margin of our hoof capsule. So this contour has become convex um, and bulging outwards, which, which worries me that this, this distal phalanx is going to um, perforate the solar margin of the hoof capsule and our sole depth is reduced to four millimetres. So those are the three things that I look at when I'm looking at laminitic x-rays. It's a bit of a whistle-stop tour. If you read the accompanying article that will be linked uh, on the VETCT website, um, you'll see a little bit more description into what these measurements mean. And there's also a article linked from there, written by Kerry Sherlock, um, in 2013 in equine veterinary education that goes a little bit more into the science behind these measurements and a little bit more into some of the other measurements that you can do when you're assessing a chronic laminitic. I hope that's been helpful for everybody. Please remember we, we welcome discussion so if you do have any questions or queries do just get in touch via the website and uh, by, by the website or the social media channels and I'll do my very best to answer those. Thank you.